talk about a topic called no questions. No questions are questions that are designed that we actually want the guest to say no. Now, we're in car sales. Why would we want our guest to say no? Isn't yes what we're looking for? Isn't getting the guest to sign on the line which is dotted? Isn't that what Alan Baldwin said in Glengarry Glen Ross? And yes, he's right. We do want to ultimately get to the yes. However, using no gets us to the yes. Let me show you how. Number one, the reasons why no works so much better than yes is because no helps us keep rapport with the guests or possibly even increase rapport. Why? Because no is easier to say than yes. See, over the years, telemarketers, salespeople, what, what are the industry? They've conditioned guests to fear yes. They, they've got it to where they've asked a series of questions in a way that lead a guest to say yes and get this yes momentum. In fact, we feel like it's, we're addicted to trying to get customers to say yes. And because of that, over the years, customers have been conditioned that that usually means a commitment. It means that they don't have as much control. It means that they're gonna kind of get boxed into where they look silly if they don't say yes. So because of that, they're pushed back whenever you ask questions that are designed to get the customer to say yes. They figured this out. So it helps you stay rapport and it makes it where you don't sound like every other salesperson. Now lastly, number three, by getting the customer to say no, it helps you actually isolate the objection because what I found over the years is when they say no, typically they'll say but afterwards. And then the, the but will be the objection and then you can use that to isolate. So let me give you an example. Let's pretend for a moment that we've been dealing with a guest by the name of Joe. Joe came out to the lot, he was a little standoffish. He wasn't a complete jerk, but he was very standoffish. When you first met Joe, right away he said to you, hey, you know what, I just want you to know up front that I never buy at the very first place I go to, so just so you know. And you work through this, you eventually, Joe, and you go inside and do a customer needs analysis, and you gain a little bit of information, enough information so you can show some vehicles to him. So you've shown one or two cars, now you're on a car after a presentation that you're gonna take for a drive, and it seems like Joe really likes it. And in fact, you guys have kind of joked around a little, and so now you've established some rapport, and, and it feels like there's some common ground there. So maybe before you take the demonstration drive, you look at Joe and you say, Joe, I know earlier you told me that you never buy at the first place. Joe, let me ask you this. It seems like we're getting along pretty good. So if we found a car like this one that you really like, we were able to fit the vehicle into your budget, it was a good deal, would it be a crazy idea for you to make us your last stop today? Joe says, no, but you'd have to get the payments to four fifty dollars a month with no money down. Or he says, no, but you'd have to knock my socks off with the trader. So then you could actually isolate that. Well, hey, look, let me ask you this. I mean, other than getting you to $400 or 450 a month with little to no money down, would there be any other reason why you wouldn't take the car home? Joe says, well, no, I mean, if you could give me the budget that I'm looking at, I'd, yeah, I'd take the car home. So there's two no questions we used right in a row that helped us, number one, flush out what the objection was. No, you'd have to be, yeah, but I'd have to be at 450. And then after we got what the objection was, we were able to isolate it one more time with those words other than, and other than, he led us to a no as well. So no can actually get you to the yes at the very end and get them to sign, which ultimately will get you the car sold and ultimately put more money in your checkbook.